It's Sunday morning, and it's time to try to finish up this job. And, of course, Mother Nature is just not having it today. So I'm hoping to get this at least uh, drilled and filled before uh, Mother Nature decides to go ahead and make today a washout. Have my camera set up here on the tripod. Going to zoom it in. And we are attempting to go ahead and drill and fill. We are going to helicoil this lower intake plenum. Because the last uh, person who worked on this went full ugga instead of breaking up the calibrated torque wrench. So first thing I'm doing is I'm gloving up. I want to go ahead and make sure I don't uh, get any metal shavings or any of this uh, highly flammable cutting solution into my skin. I already have my uh, drill bit pre-sized for the <coughs> tap ready for the helicoil. Uh, it says right here we need a 21 64 drill bit to accompany this little guy right here. Where are you? There we are. Right there. Now if you can focus for me. I am not going to be using the provided tool that comes with that because I don't like it. I have a special square socket that's going to go on my little shorty stubby wrench. So, as you can see, these guys just push in and pull out. I'm sure we all know that motion well. So, I'm going to go ahead and apply some cutting oil to these holes before I start drilling. Notice how I have my uh, intake runners all taped up. This is to prevent any uh, metal shavings from getting down inside on top of the valves and on top of the pistons. Trying to keep all of our nice moving parts safe. Keeping this FOD, this foreign object and debris from falling inside there. And I'm going to go ahead, first thing I need to do is I need to assess how far I'm drilling my hole. So I don't want to just go ahead and just go full tilt on this thing and push it in all the way through. I want to go ahead, I want to measure my hole depth, and I want to make a mark on my drill bit. So I went ahead and I used a good old calibrated eyeball and I went ahead and I measured it up against what I'm working with. Now I can see here I got a piece of tape on my drill bit. I don't want to go any further than that tape. I'll be using a bottoming tap so I'm not going to be creating any excessive distance in this hole once it's uh, drilled and threaded. Making sure my drill is not set to hammer because this is a hammer drill. It's all purpose. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to drill this hole out nice and slow. Like butter. Those were pretty stripped already. I'm out of brake clean today, so I'm going to use the next best thing. Have some good old Napa CRC Lectomotive Cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and wash off any of that cutting compound along with any of the threads. Luckily, these manifolds go straight down to the top of the block. They don't go inside the intake passage or else I would have pulled these things off. 
is I definitely don't want to go ahead and have any unwanted surprises inside the engine for the fire up once the repair is completed. Now, same process, I need to go ahead and take this tap right here. Where is it? There it is, this little tap right here, this little tap, tap, tap a -roo. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape marking on this as well, because I'm going to have to go ahead and I don't want to run this full kilter inside the uh, nice new hole we made and put that um, insert too far in there. Now, could I? Yes, and could I stop? Absolutely, but I want to go ahead, I want to have a little bit of a a bed for this plate to rest its head. Now that I got this little guy set up here, you can see that on the, um, this is a bottoming tap, it's not a boring tap. It doesn't mean it's going to go ahead and lose you in translation. It means it's not going to make any additional distance inside there once we're, uh, once we're bottomed out. So we can see here that uh, I want to make sure that I have just enough overlap so I can get past this area here where there's no threads. I want to make sure that this is going to seat all the way down inside there. Now I'm turning a little over a turn clockwise and I'm going back half a turn to clean out these threads. I just don't want to push any debris into the nice fresh threads that we're cutting. And if there was no hole on the bottom here we'd have to go ahead and go so many turns, take it out, vacuum out the shavings, and lather, rinse, repeat as required. All right, I think we're nice and good there. I'm going to take this little guy out, repeat the procedure on the back hole, and then we'll go ahead, we'll install our coils. Yep, we got a little bit of a a little bit of shaving right there. We're going to clean that off with this Lectomotive cleaner before we put it in the next hole. We want this guy to be nice and straight before we start. If not, we're going to be going sideways. Not in the fun way. Not bouncing off the red line of first and second gear going sideways. And I think my little selector on my ratchet here is about to break. So I better hurry up and finish this job up. Hmm. 
Went a little bit further than I wanted to there. But don't want my ratchet to fall apart on me in the middle of the job. All right, I'm gonna clear off the rest of these shavings. Wipe down, push off any excess. This next part here is by no means required by the um, companies that sell these uh, helicoils or the fixer thread if you go to some of the brand name brand auto parts stores. But I put a little, little dab of uh, blue Loctite on the outside of there just for good measure. These things are supposed to stay once they're installed correctly and you break off this tang on the bottom. This tang here, if it'll focus, rests right inside of here. Focus, you piece. And you break that little tang off once you're done. These are kind of my, my second choice in fixing issues like this right here. I actually prefer to use the um, Time Cert brand which is a solid metal thread, traditionally steel, especially going into aluminum. And it just does a better job for the long-term repair. And you just kind of twist it in until it's flush. Gluten tight. Don't have to kill it. And now it does not want to come out. Deuce. There we go. Come on. That's one installed. I keep this away and keep the green tape away so it doesn't end up inside the threads. Another good thing about that green high temp uh, masking tape is it, in the event it does lift up it does help catch any of that debris before it gets uh, dropped inside your intake. And I'm trying to make it so that this can be visible on camera. And you just turn it and 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 turn it until it stops. And she's good and tight. Now I just gotta go ahead and break off that tang and said she'll be good. Actually, it looks like the tool might have broke off the tang on that first one for me. But I think it's still on that second one. I dismount the camera here. Hopefully, I don't lose it. I 
the normal zoom. All right, first one, the tang is gone. And the second one, tang is still there. So I just gotta go ahead and break that tang off and we're good. But that first hole is definitely looking good. Looks to be a good proper repair. Has a little bit of countersink to the top of it, which looks just like the factory ones. I'm gonna go ahead and try to pop this tang off here, wrap this video up, and hopefully get this lower intake on.